Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, the I am Rivaldi Umara Batistuta from Classic with uh, number ID student is triple two zero zero one zero. I'm going to present about my mini paper entitled exploring the impact of role play on EFL learners speaking proficiency and confidence. Next. Next. So, background of the problem. Speaking is seen by many FL students as a challenging activity. Uh, several factors may, may influence the student's experience in mastering uh, speaking skills. There are numerous factors such as for understanding of language principles, anxiety, uneven participations, and fear of mockery. Next. Uh, so there are uh, various of teaching methods that teacher may use, but here I'm going to offer role play as the the alternatives. So according to Safriel and Rahmawati 2017, teachers produce more effective outcomes when they use more sophisticated methods. And and role play is one of the activity when if, if as if role play our students is role playing as themselves or any any other characters in particular settings in an an FL English for English for AFL classroom role play can be an effective tool for developing students uh, speaking proficiency and confidence because it's it's uh, including everyone to participate to role playing as other characters and putting themselves in another person's shoes next so uh, i as the researcher uh, divide uh, two questions on this mini paper and the first question is uh, what is the impact of using role play on fl learners speaking proficiency uh, compared to those who do not use the technique and the second question is what is the impact of using role play on fl learners confidence in speaking compared to those who do not use the technique next uh, uh, and the research purpose there are two research purposes in this mini paper. Uh, the first one is to find out the impact of using role play on EFL learners speaking proficiency compared to those who do not use the technique. And the second one is to find out the impact of using role play on EFL learners speaking confidence compared to those who do not use the technique. Next. The theoretical foundations. So the next chapter we're going to talk about theoretical foundation. 
uh, speaking definitions. Uh, speaking is a method of expressing thoughts, information, and emotions to other individuals. It is the most crucial way for the speaker to express him or herself in a language. Uh, speaking is a fundamental means of expressing thoughts, information, and emotions to others, and is an important aspect of language ability. The ability to speak a language effectively involves accurately introducing, sending, or receiving information while focusing on aspects such as pronunciation, grammar, and vocabulary. Next. So there are three main problems uh, that DFL students face in uh, mastering speaking. Uh, the first one is insufficient language proficiency. It can be uh, grammar or a limited vocabulary, or they are uh, where they cannot have uh, the insufficient language proficiency, uh, they do not uh, confidence where it makes their have a low self-confidence, uh, which can make uh, anxiety and they cannot uh, master speaking uh, comprehensively. And the last factors that uh, are the main, uh, primarily uh, contributes to speaking uh, difficulties is uh, students are too comfortable to speak in their uh, own language. Uh, it this is because uh, the most of FL students are uh, used to speak in their tongue language. So when they uh, force force it to speak in a foreign language, they cannot speak the foreign language because they are too comfortable with their mother tongue language. So the next is the definition of role play. So the definition in classroom context, uh, in classroom context, a uh, role play is used to uh, teaching uh, students uh, when they are putting themselves as uh, other professions uh, in example, uh, nurses students is uh, determined or uh, the teacher of the new students is uh, forcing the new student to role playing as a uh, working student. So the new student is known how uh, new students should behave in the workplace. In general context, role playing is seen as as if someone uh, who is not uh, who uh, are uh, imitating uh, other persons. And B is organization of role play. There are three. So the teacher can firstly there can be selected team and making a uh, appropriate scenario for students and then making uh, an assessment to evaluate the, how effective the role play for student is. Next. Methodology. So in this research, I use a quantitative experimental research. So in this study, Participants are divided into two distinct groups. That is the experimental group and the control group. So 28 undergraduate students from Sultan Agung Tirtayasa University from the same class in the Serang region, Indonesia is selected as the participant. They are divided or split into two groups, the experimental group and the control group. The control group has 14 students. Uh, it goes the same with experimental group who also has have uh, 14 students. Next. Uh, the, the data collections is divided to, into three steps. The first step is pre-test. Uh, the second is treatment. And the third is post-test. 
uh, the pretest I used to measure the 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 first uh, the basic knowledge that I had while the experimental and the control groups they given the same test to know to measure that uh, their basic knowledge about uh, speaking and the treatment on the treatment only experimental that given the treatment where they are given treatment uh, they are given treatment and as they are given to role playing and the post test uh, the post test is used to measure where there are any differences uh, between experimental and control group after the treatment uh, data analysis uh, in the research in this research uh, i the researcher compare the result of pretest and post test to discover if there any impact of pro play on students proficiency and confidence so there are the findings uh, there are two two steps in the in the study first evaluating the student score and evaluating the student score this i uh, the researcher provided the total result of the student scores and the total number of students to the, the, determine uh, the average as we can see from the table uh, i divide the result of the scores with the the uh, amount of students and the results is 76.71. Uh, the average of the pretest of control group is 76 and 70, uh, 0.71. Next. And this is the pretest results of experimental group. The experimental group scores is uh, 1061 divided uh, 14 and the result is 75.68. Uh, this result indicate that there were only uh, little disparities in the performance of students in the two groups. Thanks. So this is the post-test of the control groups. Uh, the control groups is scores, uh, the average scores of control group in this post-test is 75.78. Uh, there's, uh, as we can see, there is only a slight uh, little difference with the results of post-test and the pre-test. Uh, 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 we note that uh, the control group they they didn't given uh, any treatment, so they they didn't practice any role play activity. Next, uh, this is the results of post test of the experimental groups. As we can see. The mean scores of experimental group is dramatically improved from uh, 70, 70 and to improve it to 82.57. Uh, the result reports that with the use of role play method, the experimental group score significantly improved. It shows that uh, role play has an impact uh, positive as a um, positive impact to uh, experimental group. Next. Conclusion and suggestions. Conclusions. After the study, uh, I, the writer, conclude that role play significantly helps students who has difficulties with their fear being mocked because they are not speaking English fluently or lack of confidence. Role play helps them to be more involved in conversations with their friends as the as they are they imitating imitating as another person. And the suggestions: every student should participate in the learning activities, and the teacher should 
utilize a teaching strategy that encourage people to speak up so their speaking skills will improve. Teachers may choose to adopt the role-playing method since it engages all pupils and is enjoyable. Well, I guess that's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ya, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Honorable Mr. Safi Begal, as director of seminar on English language teaching, and my friends, my name is Sarah Alfi Muhammad Zikri. My student's ID triple two three two zero zero one zero one. Now I want I would like to present my PPT with the title. The impact of teaching students with learning variety to improve EFL learner skills. Okay, the purpose of this study is to investigate the effect of utilizing instructional strategies that cater to different learning styles and preference on the enhancement of English as a foreign language or EFL learner skills. The study aims to explore how adapting teaching methods to accommodate students' diverse learning needs can contribute to improve proficiency in English language skills, including reading, writing, speaking, and listening, by focusing on teaching students with learning variety. The study seeks to address the individual, individual difference and unique learning profiles of EFL learners. The purpose is to determine whether personalized instructional approach tailored to students' specific learning styles can lead to increased engagement, motivation, and ultimately more effective lens equation. From this research, the study aims to provide Available insight and to recommend for educators and instructors highlighting the impacts in incorporating learning variety into the EFL classroom. The ultimate goal is to uh, teach and learners in terms on their language skill development. So, uh, in the next slide, there is research creation. The research creation for the study teaching students with learning variety could be what are the different types of learning variety that teachers encounter in their classroom. So the second, how can teachers identify specific needs of each student and adjust their teaching methods according, accordingly. Why it's important? Ensuring inclusive education, students come from different backgrounds and have different learning styles. By using a variety of teaching methods, educators can ensure that all students have equal access to education and are able to learn in ways that suit their individual needs. So improve academic outcomes. Students who are taught using a variety of methods are more likely to be engaged in their learning and achieve better academic outcomes. By using different teaching methods, educators can accommodate a range of learning styles, such as visual, auditory, and kinesthetic, and help students retain information better. Preparation for the reward. In the reward, people are required to learn and adapt to new situations and challenges. Literature review. This literature review, literature review aims to explore the existing research on the effects of teaching students with learning varieties to enhance the skills of EFL learners, learning varieties, and individual differences. First is learning styles. The concept of learning styles incorporates the different sensory preference that individuals have when acquiring knowledge. The researchers identified various learning style models, such as the visual, auditory, and the AK model, and explored their implication for EFL teaching. So, in 1.2, multiple intelligence. Howard Garner's theory of multiple intelligence, individual causes different intellectual strengths and excel in the first and examine the relationship between multiple intelligence and in which highlighting the importance of embracing learners' various strengths in EFL students. 
impact on FL learner skills. Uh, 2.1 speaking skills several studies have examined the influence of teaching students with learning priorities on FL learner speaking skills. This investigation have explored the role of learning style based instru instructional strategies in communication proficiency. So for the 2.2 listening and reading skill, research has investigated the effect teaching methods on FL learners that listening and reading skill. This include the use of individual materials, multimedia research, and differentiated to interest learners comprehensive and fancy. 2.3 writing skill, the impact of teaching students with learning priority learning Writing skill has also been explored. Study studies have examined how instruction and multimodal approach can improve learners' writing creativity. So, on the methodology, uh, a research design. The study uses qualitative data collection methods, classroom observation, format qualitative data on classroom, practice, and student engagement. B. Participants in the study are English teachers and high school. First schools in Indonesia a representative sample is selected to perfect perspective and experiences. C. Data collection method to collect information on instructional strategies and homework assignment is by English teachers to observe student relationship and levels of improvement. Teaching observation are better understand the experience and perspective of the teachers and study are done with them. D. Data analysis through the use of qualitative analytical methods to get examined to find patterns and trends. Descriptive statistics are used to avoid survey data, to find repeating patterns and from data observation and interview. And the results improve language skill. The results indicate that they change the change students' learning practice significantly improve EFL learners skill across all of our domains reading writing, listening, and speaking, individual learning preference, the finest, demonstrate, methods to individual learning preference, positively influence equation. So engagement and motivation, teaching students with learning variety, student engagement and motivation, the use of varied teaching materials to different learning, different stimulate, listening in aggressive participation, and active improvement in the learning process. And positive student feedback with questionnaires reflect the students in the interview, enjoyable and effective in enhancing their language skills. For the conclusion, the findings of the study suggest that incorporating learning variety in teaching EFL learners can have a significant positive impact on the skill, adapting teaching methods and materials. Individual learning preference not only enhance language, also student engagement and motivation. The result highlights the importance of considering variety in FL instruction and provide insight for educators to design effective language teaching approach that cater to diverse learning needs. Further, research called explore the long-term effect of teaching students with learning variety and investigate the specific learning preference that lead to the most significant improvements in FL learners. Okay, maybe just this, my presentation of Sooner on English and Teaching. Thank you very much. Plus, I say wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, Mr. Shafrizal and friends. My name is Anina Amanda Putri with the standard ID 2223200100. And here I will present my research report with the title, The Obstacles of Using Technology in Teaching English, confronted by English teachers in the ninth grade. So uh, the background of the research, according to Pan in 2013, technology has developed into an essential part of society that helps students see a bigger picture of the world and not only what their teachers and schools teach them in the classroom. 
So I also put uh, the definition of teaching by Brown in 2000 that teaching is referred to as showing and helping others to learn how to do a certain thing, giving instructions, guiding and learning of something, providing expertise, and causing to know and understand. And the purpose of this research is to find out and analyze the obstacles that confronted by English teachers in the ninth grade. And next are the research questions. So this research or this study covered the following research questions. The first, what are the technology tools do English teachers employ in the classroom? Second, how important is it for English teachers to incorporate technology in their teaching? And the third, what technological obstacles do English teachers face? For the research objective, so this study or this research major goal is to reach the following things. First, to be informed of the shorts of technology that English teachers employ in the classroom. Second, to learn about the obstacles that English teachers in the classroom confront while attempting to teach English using technology. And the last, to investigate the perspectives of English teachers as they deal with the obstacles of employing technology to teach English in the classroom. Next, the literature review. So I put three topics that will be discussed, which is the definition of technology, obstacles confronted while using technology to teach English, and the previous related research. So starting with the definition of technology, according to Fazri in 2017, technology refers to things, to things or programs that can address issues with work, commerce, interaction, etc. She add that technology is a tool that aids teachers in their delivery of classes. Also, according to Sofia and Kula Sekara in 2013, the first educational tool that comes to mind when we think of technology is a computer. The second point, the obstacles confronted by teachers while using technology to teach English. So today's schools teach English in a very different way because of the usage of technology. Technology plays a crucial part in helping foreign language teachers to support their teachers' language uh, development. Because according to Arifa in 2014, the purpose of using technology uh, should be to assist and enhance language learning. And technology has a crucial role to play in facilitating and enhancing language learning. There may be uh, difficulties with uh, utilizing technology in the classroom, even while the students are used to um, utilizing technology, they might not be able to use the same tool efficiently in the classroom setting. And additionally, according to Tazrin in 2015, projectors frequently malfunction. He added that the cost of obtaining technological equipment for the school administration is too high and would involve the enormous expense of carrying out such a project. And the third point is the previous related studies. So Tazrin in 2015 studied two schools with a Bangla medium and two with an English medium. From classes um, six to 10 in both schools in Dhaka, he took 30 English language teachers. He realized that despite the government's lack of support, those teachers were still having problems applying computers and internet access to teach English in all of the schools. The students become less interested in learning English as well as how to use it in everyday circumstances as a result. And five teachers with expertise in both high school and secondary school were examined by Jenny in 2017. The use of technology in the instruction of English was acclaimed by all the teachers. The result is but secondary school and high uh, teachers report concerns about the students' use of computers and had trouble with their ability to focus. And next, the research method. 
The first is the research design. So the research uses a qualitative research method which attempts to collect and analyze non-numerical data to understand concepts, opinions, or experiences. Second, site and participants. So the research was carried out at SMP 15 Tangerang Selatan and the participants of the research are the two English teachers from SMP 15 Tangerang Selatan who teach in the ninth grade classroom. And the researcher will write them as P1 and P2. And track research instruments. So the researcher use questionnaire and observation as the instruments of the research. And for the data collection, both observation and questionnaires were employed to collect the data for this research. The observation were carried out in accordance with each teacher's English class schedule at school. And the participants also fill out the questionnaires uh, given by the researchers. And the next is the findings and the discussion. So the first point is the importance of technology for ELT or English language teaching. So participants' responses to questions revealed that teachers got cured that using technology and the internet to teach English was beneficial. Most frequently, a PowerPoint, Google Translate, Google Classroom, and YouTube were helpful to teachers. When presenting English information to the students, which might occasionally be challenging for them to understand, this technology and media were helpful. And here is some um, opinion or answer from the participant. Uh, participant one said, Yes, it is very helpful since teachers and students may assess a variety of learning resources through it. It also makes uh, studying more efficient when compared to utilizing physical books, which is more important for students these days because they are used to the internet. If the teacher is set on using just books, the students will be really lost interest. And participants to see, yes, it is advantageous since students can assess a variety of online resources, including videos and other learning elements that are not found in books and can be added to the learning materials used in the classroom. So based on the information provided previously, the participants believe that technology was helpful for ELT. The participants believe that using the internet would make teaching and learning easier since it would give people access to information from a variety of resources, particularly um, supplemental learning materials that are not available in traditional books or physical books. In addition, students participate more fully in the teaching and learning process, which prevents them from losing enthusiasm for what they learning so quickly. And the second is type of technology preferred by the English teachers in a classroom. So there are several resources uh, available to help English teachers deliver their lessons or their class. When asked about what kind of technology they prefer to use in a classroom, the teacher respond. Uh, participant one said, we don't always use it when in class. We only use the internet for specific materials when it is necessary. I use internet when the students might use websites like Google Classroom or Google Translate. However, I use LCDs and pieces to present the majority of the material during class. And participants who say, we do indeed. We only apply it when necessary. So the information above demonstrate that every teacher and student made use of technology and internet resources. Additionally, the teachers had the option to add previously downloaded image or videos to the PowerPoint slides, making the lesson material more engaging for the students. And the most often used technologies included computer, LCD projectors, uh, PowerPoint slides, and YouTube. 
and the three the the three is the obstacles confronted by English teachers when teaching using technology. So there are a few obstacles to using technology and the internet in the classroom, despite the fact that this practice is highly encouraged by teachers. So when asked about the obstacles students sometimes confront when using technology, the teacher said, from the equipment, students actually have no data connection or internet connection from school is slow when it reach the student's class. Generally speaking, not all students can use the internet appropriately based on their character. As a result, not all students use the internet to aid in their learning when the teacher asks them to, which causes them to miss out on opportunities to use the internet for other purposes. Participants who say, when the Wi-Fi is cut off, there is a struggle. However, because they are accustomed to using technology, students could solve other issues on their own. The issue only arises because of technical issue. So the information uh, about demonstrate that while using technology and the internet to support teaching and learning was very advantageous for both teacher and student. But not all facilities could be fully utilized at the time. The facility itself or the student's ability to focus could possibly be the source of the issues. The participant clarified that the difficult internet connection was the main cause of the issue. So the findings presented above are consistent with those made by Gini in 2017. She claimed that Technology doesn't always operate as intended and that there can be a de uh, additional issue um, associated with its use, such as issue with internet connections. So based on the findings and discussion, I can conclude that one of the media frequently used to teach English in SMP 15 Tangerang Selatan is the technology and the internet. According to the findings, typical obstacles that teachers run to while using technology and the internet may be divided into two aspects. The first is due to the equipment, and the second is because of the environment in the classroom and the attention spans of the students. The teacher found it difficult when the tools broke down. The classroom occasionally could not assess the school's Wi-Fi signal making it impossible to teach. Observations revealed that the blurry image displayed by the LCD projector occasionally led it to function poorly. Along with a pure internet connection and poor um, equipment quality in, this, in spite of the fact that using technology and the internet could be advantages, especially when teaching English, this research seeks to explain the obstacles that teacher confronted. The conclusion above shows that using technology to teach English is not always successful. The availability of tools in every school, the state of the classroom and the students, and the condition of the existing equipment are all can be potential obstacles. So that it all, that it all, uh, the research report from me. I hope that uh, these findings and discussion can broaden our knowledge about the technology that can um, be advantages, but can be uh, not that advantages at some time. So I think that's all for me. Thank you so much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Honorable Mr. Shahrizal, SD Seminar on English Language Teaching Lecture. 
I'm Arika Yumarani here. I would like to present my research paper on exploring variables affecting English education major students' unwillingness to communicate in English on campus. Introduction. Background of the study. Gaining communication skills is the goal of language learning. As a result, to achieve their language learning goals, language learners must be willing to communicate in a target language. This is considering the idea of willingness to communicate, or WTC, is a model which combines the psychological, linguistic, communicative variables to define, clarify, and predict second or foreign language communication. The same holds for studying foreign languages such as English, which is among the most significant languages in the world. To develop and perfect their successful, competent, and valuable abilities, EFL learners' willingness to engage in English during the learning process and time is crucial. So here are the formulation of problem and the research purposes. First one, what is the concept of willingness to communicate in language teaching? How significant is the concept of willingness to communicate towards second or foreign language learning? To what extent could the concept of willingness to communicate impact the foreign language teaching learning process? What are the variables affecting the English education major students' willingness to communicate in English on campus? And the last one is to what extent do the linguistic, psycholinguistic, social, cultural, and institutional variable affect the English education major students' willingness to communicate in English on campus. Theory. Willingness to communicate. Individuals do, however, display general oral communication behavioral characteristics. This shows the presence of a propensity or personality feature known as willingness to communicate by McCroskey and Bear in 1985. He was described as a person propensity to strike up a conversation with others. The structures of unwillingness to communicate, propensity toward verbal conduct, and shyness all designed to clarify an individual's general tendency to engage in communication evolved into the concept of first language um, willingness to communicate as a personality trait that is fairly constant with different interlocutors and across various situations. The significance of willingness to communicate towards second language learning. As it promotes second language usage, second language communicative willingness controls the shift from receptive comprehension to production. However, as language use is the ultimate aim of language learning, second language uh, willingness to communicate can also be seen as a learning outcome. Most persons who require a second or foreign language do, do so intend to use it when real-world communication possibilities present themselves. Researchers have also noted that willingness and ability are two different concepts. As a result, developing communication skills should not be the sole object of the training. As a result, language teaching should place a high priority in helping students become willing users of a second language, in this case, English. Teachers that are aware of the various enabling and limiting elements affecting the second language WTC can assist their pupils in advancing in language use. Research methodology. This research was carried out at Sultan Agung Ganesha University, Banten, Indonesia, three six semester English study program students uh, from so from Undertan participated in this current study. These three pupils were chosen through the use of a purposive sampling strategy. Given that the focus of the current study was narrative, a qualitative approach, specifically a narrative inquiry approach, was used. In narrative inquiry, stories are gathered and developed either as a way to gather data or as a way to organize a research endeavor. Data collection instrument. Google Forms open-ended surveys along with followed-up and structured interviews were used as the data gathering method in the study. This method was chosen because it gives the researcher a great deal of latitude in probing participants' perspectives and enables the researcher to, to learn in-depth um, details about the phenomenon under investigation. Data analysis technique. By understanding and telling the participants' stories using a narrative, 
inquiry approached that in both education, selection, and simplification, the data from the current study were evaluated qualitatively. The collected information or interview transcript were organized by the main, the main themes, the establishment of groups, and anal analysis based on the literature and developing topics to carry it out this analysis job. Finding and discussion. Interview results summary. So the interview results summary covers mostly about uh, participants' primary reason for choosing, uh, their major, participants' English communication frequency, their daily usage of English, um, their preferred activities outside the class to practice speaking English, and their most comfortable settings or times to do so, participants' fear of being criticized or corrected by others, self-confidence in speaking English, and etc. So um, here is the result. Variables affecting the participants reluctant to communicate in English on campus. First is linguistic variable. Participants admitted that they found it difficult to speak in English most of the time since they were struggling with proper grammar usage, lack of vocabulary, and mispronouncing some words, and etc. The second variable is psycholinguistic variable. Participants openly acknowledged that they occasionally felt hesitant to use English more frequently out of fear of making errors, although they knew that they this was a common issue that came from the AFL learners themselves. So, uh, the third one is social cultural variable. Participants admitted that their peers uh, spoke primarily in their native tongue, in this case, Bahasa Indonesia. And this type of habit or culture had a significant impact on their unwillingness to interact in English more frequently. And the last one is institutional variable. Since all of the participants acknowledged that the available regulations were not sufficiently clear and strict, uh, this variable such as confusing uh, institutional norms and lecture teaching um, methods constitute the following variable contributing to the participants' unwillingness to speak in English on campus. So, uh, the conclusion is based on the result of the current study, it was determined that linguistic variables, psycholinguistic variables, social cultural variables, and institutional variables were the main factors influencing participants' readiness to speak more frequently in English on campus. Besides, students reluctant to use English on campus was found to be most strongly influenced by the social, cultural, and institutional variables. Therefore, institutional the, Therefore, the institution has to have a more specific and strict, strict regulation requiring all lecturers and students to constantly use English both inside and outside of the classroom to decrease the student's propensity to speak in English. The institution must also take into account the penalties of for individuals who violate the rules to get their students as involved in the teaching learning process as possible all lecturers need to adopt a more communicative teaching approach. Um, they, they should also provide more engaging topic discussions and constructive criticism for students' mistakes and serve as positive role models for the students to create an active classroom atmosphere. And the suggestions is to enhance students' readiness to communicate more frequently in the target language, the beginning point can be shared by developing a positive connection and mood between the lecture and the class. Current approaches to language education and learning are closely related to the idea of willingness to communicate in a target language. Um, the primary goal of language training, according to McIntyre in 1998, is to increase language learners' readiness to engage in meaningful cross-cultural interactions in the target language. Do educational connotations of WTC are relevant to and significant for students and teachers of foreign languages? In addition, this idea plays a crucial part in the target language and it's important it can help one develop their capacity for valuable and successful communication. And here are the, uh, some, of the, some of the references that I use uh, in this paper. I think that's all for me. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, hello everyone and Mr. Safrijal. 
Uh, my name is Aura Inhermansha and students ID 2223200107. Now I want to present my research on the title Senior Secondary School Students' Perception of Using YouTube in Improving Apple Learners' Motivation in Speaking English at SMKN 6 Kabupaten Tangerang. And in this chapter, chapter 1, there is background of the study. Students can be encouraged to learn independently and develop critical thinking skills through the use of developing focus on the YouTube application. Students will mm -hmm. also be used to looking for information from a variety of sources to study according to ABIT 2016. The speaking ability would be improved if it were supported by the real world or reliable information as part of a student program, uh, said Ab Well Abdurrahman 2016. The stage based on the previous task, task process and the focal language basis is included in the execution of this technique. This tactic is meant to aid students in problem solving and raise their proficiency in pronouncing words. This study is being conducted to offer beneficial knowledge about how YouTube can be used as a learning tool to provide language practice, boost students' motivation for learning, and identify additional ways to improve students' learning of the English language in a way that appeals to senior secondary school students by employing YouTube for studying English. Therefore, uh, the researcher would like to investigate senior secondary school mm -hmm. students' perception of using mm -hmm. YouTube in improving EF learners' motivation in speaking English. Mm -hmm. And the next, there's identification of the problems. Based on the mm -hmm. background of research, some problems could be identified as follow. Uh, many students in secondary school are not motivated in speaking English. Students need technology to make them motivated in speaking English and students' problems in lack of self-confidence, fear of making mistakes, uh, the embarrassment of others, nervousness, and never practicing. And for the limitation of the research problem, this research was conducted on 11 grade students at senior secondary school in the second semester. The research limits the topic to the sec senior secondary school students' perception of using YouTube in improving FL learners' motivation in speaking English. And next, for the research question, based on the background of the study, the researcher formulated the question of the study as follows. How are senior secondary school students' perception of using YouTube and improving FL learners' motivation in speaking English? And the next, there is the objective of the study. In line with the research question, the, this research aims to find out the senior secondary school students' perception of using YouTube in improving FMRS motivation and speaking English, especially in English classroom. And last, for the significance of the study, the finding of this study will hopefully give some contributions to the following part. The first is the English teacher. The results of this research are intent to provide information for teachers who use YouTube to teach English in their classes. And second, for the student, they should also assist students in resolving any issues they may be having with their English growth, particularly when it comes to speaking. And last, for the further researcher, if another researcher decides to go into the same topic, they may potentially utilize this study as a research. And the next chapter, chapter two, there is literature review. In this chapter, there is definition of perception. According to Wang, 2007, uh, perception is a collection of internal phenomena cognitive processes carried out by the mind's cognitive function layers of the brain. In other terms, perception is the belief that something is real by a group of individuals. It follows that the form, the term perception, refers to an item. People's perceptions are what they believe 
to be true and understandable to them. And next, there's definition of YouTube. YouTube, according to Prakoso 2009, is a website that allows users to share videos with others all around the world. Therefore, uh, one of the platforms of learning YouTube uh, uh, for learning a language, sorry, is YouTube. And students are therefore expected to get the most out of YouTube in terms of learning. And next, uh, the definition of YouTube video in education. Uh, YouTube is utilized to engage students, inspire creative teaching techniques, and expand theoretical material, said Agazio and Buckley, 2009. Additionally, it provides immediate access to instructional, cultural, and foreign language movies because YouTube provides videos from famous scientists, writers, TV news broadcasts, politicians, and other TV shows. It is a reasonably straightforward way to make educational materials relevant and specialized to learn to learning English, said Pratama 2020. And next, definition of speaking. One of the four language skills is speaking. And for many students, being proficient in English speakers is a top priority. It's because they rely on speaking abilities to maintain rapport in interpersonal interaction, persuade others, and succeed or fail in negotiation, said Brini 2012. The difficult part is that when individuals wish to chat or say anything to someone else, they have to take into account a number of interconnected factors, such as concept, the language utilized, what to say, how to use syntax and vocabulary, pronunciation, as well as well as listening to and responding to interlocutors. As a result, uh, if students do not practice speaking in class, they will quickly lose interest in what they are studying and lack in incentive to do so. And next, chapter three, uh, research methodology. In this chapter, there is research design, in the study, qualitative research techniques are used with descriptive qualitative. The descriptive technique, according to Nazir 1988, is a method that looks at the current situation of human groupings, an item, a group of circumstance, a way of thinking, or a class event. The objective of this descriptive research uh, is to produce a methodological, factual, and accurate description of or painting of the facts, qualities, and relationship between the phenomena under investigation. And the next, for research setting and subject, this research was conducted online by conducting interviews via Google Meet and an online questionnaire. For the research subject, uh, FL students from the senior secondary schools level at SMK N6 Kabupaten Tangerang is the focus of this study. 35 element grade, 11 grade students from class 11 multimedia 4 at SMK N6 Kabupaten Tangerang was chosen by the researcher to take part in this research. And next, technique of collecting data. Students sometimes avoid speak, speaking out because they are ashamed to express their ideas or information and worry that they will seem bad in front of their peers, according to Yin 20 and 14. In this study, the researcher will employ the approach of gathering information through questionnaire and interviews. And next for data analysis, Data analysis may be seen as a process that involves discussing and comprehending data in order to draw certain meanings, interpretation, and conclusion from the research overall data. Data analysis is separate into three main processes. Uh, there are data condensation and the deriving and validating findings. These phases are based on the framework of qualitative analysis created by Miles and Huberman 2014. 
And next chapter, chapter four, research findings and result. Uh, in this uh, research finding, this chapter contain the researcher finding. The chapters two main components are the research result and discussion section. The method of interpreting the research findings is the subject of the discussion. According to the survey result, 35 students at the SMKN 6 Kabupaten Tangerang, uh, 11 grade or 100% utilize YouTube to learn English. And it was enhanced by the students' comment. They said, we can study different language on YouTube in addition to English. Some of the YouTubers' vlogs that I watch and that can also help me learn English are those that essentially speak English the entire time. And according to the findings of another survey, there are 30 students in the 11th grade at SMKN 6 Kabupaten Tangerang or 86% concur that YouTube might assist them to improve their English. Five students or 14% disagree with that statement. And according to the result of interview, YouTube can increase students' motivation to speak English as not by the students' five. We are able to observe and hear how to pronounce English correctly from the majority of English-speaking YouTubers. And the last survey, uh, there are 18 students in the 11th grade at SMKN 6, Kabupaten Tangerang, or 51% concur that they feel comfortable speaking English. A little over half, or 49% of grade of 11 graders disagree that they feel comfortable speaking English. According to the result of the interview, more of them feel comfortable speaking English. However, students uh, three observed that they still have self con continuous about it. Third, uh, he said, even though I felt comfortable speaking English, I was still terrified to make errors. And the next, and the next for the result, uh, result from the questionnaire and interview, made it clear YouTube can increase students' drive to talk even if almost half of them will lack confidence while speaking in English, according to Liu 2010. The YouTube video learning method improves students' analytical skills among other skills. Additionally, it was shown that kids learn more effectively when they have access to YouTube both inside and outside of the classroom. They also said viewing YouTube videos make study, studying more interesting. Next, uh, the last chapter, chapter five, conclusion and suggestion. For the conclusion, uh, the researcher draws the conclusion that YouTube is a learning platform where teachers may obtain real teaching researchers, researchers based on the findings and analysis present above. It implies that using YouTube will help the learner become more motivated to speak English with proper uh, pronunciation and a deeper grasp of grammar. Uh, and last for the suggestion, teachers are encouraged to do in order to make learning more enjoyable for their students by selecting the appropriate approach and strategies like using YouTube videos to create a fun and comfortable learning environment so that students are more interested and motivated to learn English, especially in speaking. The study also advised uh, the structure of two gradually present students with appropriate YouTube videos to assist them develop their speaking abilities. Okay, so that's all from me uh, in my presentation paper. Thank you very much. And last, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
udah nih recordnya okay, uh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good evening everyone uh, An honorable to Professor Dr. Shafrizal As a lecturer in the seminar on ELT course And all of my friends who attended the meeting today So, um, let me introduce myself. My name is Maisha Kamala Putri. Uh, today, I want to present uh, my proposal about EFL students' perception of using Grammarly to aid students' mastery of simple past tense in writing the context. Okay. First, we're going to talk about chapter one uh, in introduction. The first is background of the research. In this technology era, everything is technology-based um, in education, especially in writing. Students need technology as a tool to develop their knowledge of writing in English. According to Pranoto, writing means putting ideas into writing or telling others something through writing. There are several factors why writing skills are hard to master. And one of them is lack of grammar. English education students also have the same problem. And there are now grammar apps that can change your writing for others, namely Grammarly. This application is frequently used by students to correct writing errors and to provide solutions for grammar errors. Um, based on the foregoing, the researcher wishes to study how learners think of the Grammarly program as a tool for mastery of simple past tense and recontext writing abilities. So, uh, some issues might be discovered based on the research background as follows. First, many learners continue to utilize non standard language. Second, learners require technology to examine their writing for faults. And the third is a dearth of familiar ter terminology, marks for punctuation, and grammar. So the limitation of the problems, um, the research was conducted out among six semester Eng English education students at the edu education, education and teacher training faculty during the academic year 2022-2023. The study focuses on students' perception of the Grammarly applications for assisting AFL students' writing competence. So based on the problems limitation, the research question of this research is how do students perceive Grammarly application as online grammar checker to aid AFL students' mastery of simple past tense in context writing? And for the objective of this study is to discover how learners think of Grammarly application as an online grammar checker to aid EFL students mastery of simple past tense in recon text writing. And the significances of the research, the researchers hope that the study's findings will provide readers with extra information. They are going to be aware of how students' opinions of Grammarly as an online grammar checker affect EFL pupils' comprehension of basic past tense and writing abilities to retail material. The researchers' results help to raise instructors' understanding of the importance of focusing consideration to the usage of electronic media in the process of instruction and learning. This is because electronic media may help to enhance the process of interaction and learning while additionally allowing learners to better comprehend uh, the topic. So now let's continue to chapter two, the literature review. First, uh, definition of perception as defined by Walton and Melfiza is a process of arranging and interpreting the stimulus that is in concert so that it takes on meaningful <coughs> and is an integrated response in the individual. Uh, the term perception is often used in the field of psychology. In technical terms, perception is an immediate reaction to absorption or the process by which someone learns something through perceiving. 
Lastly, it is important to define the method of interpretation. Perception relates to individual human ideas and feelings, and one person may experience something differently than another, despite the fact the item under the examination is the same. Second is concept of writing. The first uh, definition of writing is a talent which over writers uh, with an outlet that allows them to communicate or convey their ideas according to now. This remark implies that writing is an important ability that learners, particularly in the nation EFL, learners should learn. So um, based on the hypothesis, hypothesis, it is possible to complete that writing is a method of communicating in which thoughts are presented with message clarity and suitable written format by doing many writing acts. The second is purpose of writing. So uh, writing serves a variety of objectives according to Annie Whitecker. So the first is informative purpose. The goal of informative writing is to offer readers with new knowledge about the subject. Writing that is informative often clarifies, states, and offers specific on things, procedures, items, places, and occurrences. The second is persuasive purpose. So writing for the goal of persuasion is an effort to convince people of anything and to alter their perspective so that they accept as well as believe anything the authors write. And the, the third is analytical purpose. So analytical writing is intended to clarify the reasons behind why something occurs, as well as to assess the effectiveness, provide solution to issues, and investigate the link among diverse concepts. So this sort of writing is used to acquire information and provide a probable, a probable response to the writer's query. Uh, so the third is aspects of writing. Uh, writers must be do more than just scribble thoughts on paper to generate effective writing. So uh, in the words of Brian, below are certain factors that ought to be given particular attention to the writing of the writer. The first is content. A, sub a substance or literary topic is referred to as content. Good writing comes when the title accurately reflects the content. Next, the uh, second is organization. It suggests that the authors are aware of the way the concepts are organized. Writers must be capable to divide phrases to paragraphs and back up them by using different connected words in order to make the paragraphs coherent, clear, and effective. The third is vocabulary. The primary goal of writing is to choose appropriate words to explain thought clearly and directly. The uniformity of the use of vocabulary is crucial as the writers must properly understand their choice of terms relevant to the themes. The fourth is grammar. Grammar discusses how words form and structure and how they are arranged in sentences. And the last is mechanic. It consists of a series of sentences require capitalized words, punctuation, and precise spelling. The process of writing um, is made up of numerous features or methods that authors utilize to have their writing uh, works published. Uh, as that by Richard Gentry, there are several, several places or processes involved in writing, including rewriting, drafting, revising, editing, and proofreading. The next is definition of simple past tense. So, um, in general, the past tense expresses events or situations that occur in the past. The simple past tense, as defined by Azar, denotes that an occurrence or event started and concluded at a certain period in the distance past. The simple past tense is a grammatical tense that occurred in the previous year. So, based on several scholars, these are the meanings of the simple present, simple past tense. As a result, the researcher determined that simple past tense refers to previous events in a simple form with particular adverb. 
The first, we're gonna talking about the context. The definition of the context, um, recounts are the most basic text kind in the genre. Recounts are chronological texts which co accomplish nothing beyond order and array of occurrences as defined by Peter Knapp. <coughs> so uh, according to David Bath, a recount is a piece of writing uh, which describes what took place and chronicles a series of incidents and assesses how relevant they are in some way. As a result, the author determined that a recount text is a text that uses temporal sequences to describe an event or experience of the writer. And for the general structure, the, the recount text is divided into three sections. The first is orientation. Orientation serves as the opening or introduction. And then the second is even. An even is a section of the context that comprises sequences of phenomena or describes, uh, describes the events in the tale. And for the last general structure is reorientation. It's a component of the framework of the context that includes an optional closing of the event in the narrative. Okay, so for the last literature review is Grammarly. The definition of Grammarly, Grammarly is a prominent online grammar checker nowadays. Mace Lifting and Alex uh, Shevchenko started Grammarly in 2009. Grammarly is an online editing service um, that may be utilized to analyze papers and eliminate mistakes in writing in regards to vocabulary usage grammar and mechanics as explained by Gufron and Rashida. So um, Grammarly not only identifies punctuation and wrong word, words, but it also identifies fragments and given verb from assistance. And in a sense, Grammarly is automatic online software that provides various features to decrease learners' writing errors as well as corrections and explanation. And uh, there are two types of Grammarly tools. For the first is free version. So in this version, it is neither a software or severely constrained version. This version includes um, the fundamental features that must be written down, including spelling, grammar, and punctuation checks. Um, Grammarly just uh, for free version, just give 500 words for grammatical checking in this edition. Next is premium version. Unlike the free version, the premium edi edition is capable of more than the free version. The premium has more features than the free version. At least nine characteristics are included in this ed edition. Uh, it can fix entire uh, document simultaneously. Furthermore, each grammatical problem is explained briefly and thoroughly as well as the suitable solution. Next is research methodology. So in this research, um, a qualitative approach and a narrative inquiries research design were employed in the study. So in the study, narrative inquiry reveals uh, how Popiel dealt uh, with the grammarly application. So um, the narrative inquiry students design was adopted to discover detail about the EFL experiences and perceptions about the Grammarly program. So the study is of the narrative inquiry type since it seeks to discover what issues and solutions EFL learners encounter when using the Grammarly program. The research setting was conducted at the Sultan Sasera University, which is located at Jalan Ciwarunaya. Cipara Serang City, Banten. The research carry out face to face. And for the subject, this study focuses on learners of EFL in their sixth semester at the English Education Department. Um, the investigator chooses three people to take part in the interview process. And the part, uh, the three pupils were purposefully chosen to participate with this narrative inquiry investigation. The readiness of the person to participate in this research will also be considered. 
So the technique of collecting data, uh, an interview and narrative framing were utilized to collect data. So the investigator utilized a semi-structured interview to collect oral story data. And then for a narrative frame is a handwritten story framework composed of incomplete phrases and empty spots for all varying lengths. And for the technique of analyzing data, um, the data in the study was analyzed using an interpretive analyze, analysis procedure by the researcher. Um, the researcher employed story participants as collective tales as part of the interpretive analysis process and examined the link themes and subthemes that emerge from the stories using cross cast analyze methodologies. Okay, um, chapter four, finding and discussion. So the first, uh, the tale of um, AA, uh, AI experience only positive effective. So the first participant uh, is um, AA, a lovely young lady. She is a six semester English department student at the University of Sultan Agatha And she has been a classmate of mine since 20 and 20. She um, discovered that writing was an important ability in her major while studying English department. I inquire her to explain the results she obtained from using the Grammarly software. And she stated that the Grammarly application had a beneficial impact on her. It greatly aids her writing. It may look for any mistakes in the content she's, she has typed. And she also mentioned that Grammarly provide her in, with an ambiguous description of the way process could be mod modified, resulting in a great tool for improving her English writings. Be very effective for a simple past tense mastery. When I ask her, is the application Grammarly helpful for enhancing a simple past tense in composing recognition? She said, yes, it does. It's very uh, effective for simple past tense mastery. She remarked that the auto-correcting grammar options allows her to effortlessly amend her language. The, sec the third is, it may over enough information for evaluating some mistakes. So the third question in my interview is concerning the Grammarly application's grammar function. And she, she replaced by is, it doesn't give a reasonable remedy of the use of model and to be. And she believed that it may offer enough information for evaluating some mistakes. However, it doesn't give an adequate adjust adjustment for the elevated state of difficulty. The fourth is Grammarly always gives suggestions of the word I'm referring to. So according to her, Grammarly spelling to tool covers misspelled and unclear words in any text. Um, she explained when I'm unsure of what to write or if I write incorrectly, Grammarly always gives suggestions of the word I'm referring to. As a result, she believed it gave her a favorable impression that Grammarly's spelling tool handles the English spelling words effectively. The fifth is, it has always been quite beneficial to me. She responded to the fifth interview question I posed, stating that the Grammarly punctuation option really aided her in her writing recall material. Uh, she also stated that the autocorrect punctuation tool of Grammarly is adequate. The, the last is, I believe all feedback provided by Grammarly is valid. So we discussed whether or not Grammarly's feedback is always right. She expressed her thoughts on the subject. She considered all Grammarly feedback to be valid in her opinion. The second, the tale of SD. So the first, she said that it greatly assists me in writing essays and or articles. So she informed me that she received a lot of impacts from the Grammarly software. She added can instantly repair her grammatical errors. The second, she said that it completely works for me. So 
we may utilize the grammar program as an online tool that will render writing simpler. She ad additionally utilized that grammar application to write a paper. And she said that it is, it completely works for her. She, she asserted firmly that Grammarly is merely a grammar checking tool. It is unable, uh, unable to teach individuals how to compose text. The third is she said that they are not comfort, covered by the free version. So she clarified that as a free user, Grammarly tool is correct and contains all parts of grammar. But uh, she reasoned that because the trial version has restricted features, uh, this version must not be genuine. And the fourth is, she said, it's not always covered. She chuckled to me that it's not always covered. Some should not be repaired and should instead be repaired by Grammarly. It perplexed me. She claimed that Grammarly provides superfluous edits that destroy her sentences as she was writing. The fifth is Grammarly automatically corrects it. Uh, so according to her, Grammarly always corrects it automatically. She also mentioned that Grammarly's spelling tool might help her writing stronger, stronger retelling text. And the last, she said that it will be more effective if the premium version is used. So Grammarly uh, is occasionally not accurate. As a result, she must personally examine Grammarly's recommendation. It will be more effective if the premium version is used. And the last um, participant say the first, I receive a positive response from this application, which will assist me in improving my writing skill. So uh, she informed that she has had great results from utilizing this tool. And she informed me that the Grammarly program provides an abundance of advantages. The second, it, she said, it has helped me greatly improve my comment of the simple past tense. So she believes that Grammarly could identify grammatical faults in her work, but it's insufficient for individuals who do not comprehend or lack a rudimentary understanding of the the third, she said that it's nearly perfect. So she remarked that the modification was nearly flawless each time she utilized Grammarly. And the fourth is she said that Grammarly can correct spelling mistakes. She said that the spell check to Grammarly's free edition addresses sufficient spelling issues in her work. It validates every word uh, in her work. And she mentioned that Grammarly spelling tool might help her write stronger with spelling text. The fifth is she said that the punctuation feature was extremely helpful. She she stated that the fact that the automatic correction punctuation tool of Grammarly is adequate. Grammarly explains how to utilize punctuation in sentences. She should be able to re rectify her punctuation. And the last, she said that Grammarly sometimes incorrectly corrects my work. Grammarly's input in her perspective in occasionally not right. Grammarly, in her views, has pros and downsides, but in overall, Grammarly's capabilities make a simpler to project any form of content. So the discussion, all participants agree that Grammarly helps them to improve their knowledge. Um, of the simple past tense while producing recontext. They noticed that Grammarly assisted them in learning on their own. Grammarly does, however, have certain limitations. All participants have given their opinions about Grammarly and its downsides they have encountered. The last chapter is conclusion and suggestion. So, so the conclusion based on study conducted at the English Education Department of the University of Sultan Agentitaya Saserang on pupils' opinions on using the Grammarly application to improve their understanding of simple past tense in writing the context. The researcher concludes that the Grammarly application may assist pupils master the simple past tense in the context. For the suggestion, the study's author recommends that subsequent academics investigate a similar subject with various respondents, including senior secondary learners, to enhance future research. Um, 
It is additionally desirable if the domain is diverse, such as knowing how to utilize Grammarly to learn additional tenses in a piece of writing generally or to improve reading abilities. The researcher thinks that by performing more research, we improve reading abilities and research with a wider range of domains and individuals, the gaps in the study will be filled. Uh, okay, I think this is the, the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you very much for attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.